Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. I walked in on my girlfriend cheating on me with my roommate. My day has not been going well, to be honest. So I believe I can confidently declare that today is the worst day of my life. So I suppose a little history is in need. This is going to be a long one. I became close friends with this man, Josh, in high school seven years ago. We'd known each other since grade 3, I believe, but hadn't truly hung out until grade 10, for reasons I won't go into. He and I were as close as brothers could be. The only time our friendship faltered was when we both had feelings for the same girl in high school. I went after her initially, it happens. They finally met a few weeks later. He made me third wheel once or twice, which is why I felt irritated with him. Things have been going rather well since that awful occurrence. We attended to the same high school and now live with two of our university friends. Things were going swimmingly until today. I met a girl on his floor in my first year. She, Anna, was great. We had an instant connection. We had the most loving, healthy, and fulfilling relationship I'd ever been a part of during the next three years. We never argued, but rather discussed various topics. We could sit and be in one other's presence for extended periods of time, or we could just be goofy goose with each other. There's no use in trying to articulate it any further because the term love, in its most literal sense, completely expresses my sentiments. Josh also had a terrific girlfriend, and the four of us would spend a lot of time together. They'd just been together for a year, and hope not for much longer. So back to the incident. It's the last day of autumn break here. Today I had to work from 3 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I had arranged to meet up with Anna once I got home from work. When I arrived home, Josh was the only one present, but I heard what sounded like moaning. My girlfriend's shoes were also on the mat. I assumed she was come to surprise me. What a wonderful girl she is, but I guess not. I make my way downstairs to my room. She isn't there, much to my astonishment. I'm perplexed, and then I hear a noise I'll never forget. My girlfriend's scream is unmistakable, and I've heard it enough to recognize it. I should explain that I was bullied a lot between the ages of 10 and 14. Because of bullies, I began taking several martial arts classes when I was 12 years old. I only had to defend myself once, but there was no one else with me after that. So I kept attending the lessons and improved a lot. So now I can kick some balls, Josh knew this dot, so I lose all sense of reality and go berserk. I'm guessing they didn't hear me walk in. They were taken aback when I kicked Josh's door open. He had a satisfied expression on his face because he knew I was about to injure him. Her expression was emotionless. She was simply at a loss for what to do. You remember the part in Fight Club where Ed Norton beats the crap out of Jared Leto. That's what I wanted to do, but I restrained myself. I believed simply knowing what I was capable of doing to him was enough punishment along with the loss of his best buddy and other such things. Then I just stood there staring at her. We shared an existential crisis. For approximately five minutes, I felt like we were being thrown in and out of reality. I simply walked up to the front door. He'd already gone. I took both of her shoes and placed them outside. I went to my room and gathered all of her possessions, placing them in a bag and leaving them at the door. At this moment, she was in tears. She kept apologizing, stating it had happened only once and was a mistake. I told her to leave and never speak to me again in the calmest manner I could conjure, and that we were definitely done. I could feel my emotions erupting. I wanted to cry, scream, and curl up in a ball and die. That happened roughly five hours ago. Update. So it's been a strange week. I spent the majority of the week at my folks' place. Before I get to the new material, I'd just like to say a few words. Everything I've written has been truthful. I've been lurking on this subreddit for a long now, and I'd never fabricate a narrative merely to troll people. Also, a few individuals stated my writing seemed like it came from a book or a movie script. I write fiction for a living and have been writing stories for most of my life, so I suppose that influenced my post. I'd also like to thank everyone for their encouraging thoughts. I don't think I really had time to read all of the comments because there were so many, but the comments helped me deal with things okay, Let's go over what's happened. Sunday, I spoke with my ex-ex-girlfriend. Friend she is aware, has broken up with him, and is dealing with the aftermath. She and I have agreed to be friends, but we will keep our distance for the time being. Tuesday, I chatted with my other roommates and informed them of my plans to move out, even though they are supportive. 
I really can't stay in that house any longer. One of them also told me that he may have caught them doing this accidentally a few weeks ago. He was never certain, therefore he never said anything but remained suspicious. I don't mind his not informing. He did nothing wrong because he was in a difficult situation. Tuesday night. I was getting tired of my ex phoning and messaging me. So I blocked her. She just kept messaging from a different phone, so I caved. She called, and I spoke with my ex, which was probably not the best choice. I informed her she had broken my trust and that I would never speak to her again. She informed me she had never truly loved me, that this was not the first time she had cheated on me, and that I was not the only male she had cheated on. I told her I adored her and didn't care as she was attempting to make me angry or envious. She sobbed and apologized for her words, and she retracted them. She attempted to persuade me to give in, but I refused. I spoke with my ex-best pal on Wednesday afternoon, Josh. I informed him that we were finished. I questioned him why he would do something like this. He claimed that it simply sort of happened. It all started with some stupid flirting while he was experiencing problems with his girlfriend. It grew swiftly during the summer while I was away in the West. I'm not sure how long they've been doing things. It doesn't matter. I went to see my psychiatrist today and asked her if there was a disagreement. She stated that it was not the case. It was beneficial to speak with her. She believes I am handling the situation properly. She has stated that there would be no communication with either of them. I will gladly comply with this. This week, my emotions have been all over the place. For the first day, I felt nothing. So far, I've had some extremely bad luck. There have also been moments of what may be called happiness. I'm not sure what that is anymore. Wasn't that a little melodramatic future? I'm thinking about moving to a couple new cities. Canada is a fantastic country, with a plethora of fantastic cities. Hopefully, the future holds some exciting surprises. Story 2 My cheating hubby wishes to reclaim me. My husband and I have been married for four years, and I recently found that he had a mind-body affair with a co-worker that lasted a few months. They'd been phoning, chatting, and falling in love with each other, and they'd also kissed a few times, which supposedly made him feel alive and himself again. Before I discovered the affair, he was ready to leave me and blame the marriage failure on a lack of emotional and connection, as well as a lack of mutual interests and aspirations, among other things. He went back and forth on whether to stay with me or with the mistress after the affair was revealed, but after weighing the pros and cons, he's decided he wants to stay with me and our baby. But I don't think his reasons for staying are very compelling, that he prefers me for my looks, that he knows I make a better wife and am trustworthy, that I'm a good mother and that his parents want us to stay together. He apologizes for cheating but maintains that he only did it because we lacked chemistry and hadn't felt this exhilarating feeling in a long time and missed it. He has been unable to be aroused by me since the beginning of our marriage, and as a result, he does not enjoy himself with me due to a lack of arousal and difficulties obtaining an erection. He claims that this difficulty arose because I had a medical ailment with intercourse that made it uncomfortable for me at first and positions were extremely restricted and not as nice for him, which we also did not have before the marriage. He then turned off his desire to have intercourse with me because he believed it would never be what he desired and began watching porn instead of or immediately prior to having intercourse with me, trying to conceive only added to his stress but I was unaware of how he was feeling the entire time because he constantly assured me everything was wonderful and that he felt okay. He claims he didn't have the courage to express his true thoughts to me because he knew I was going through a lot, overcoming the pain condition, going through miscarriages, so really wanting a baby. I never saw any of this and figured he had a low libido because I was always the one initiating or initiating intercourse. Anyway, he's now really pushing us to work out by going to counseling therapy and the doctor to see if there are any underlying explanations for the erectile dysfunction. I know he claims he's sorry, but I don't get the impression of genuine and deep regret. Even if I can get over the pain of the deliberate infidelity, the underlying problem of why he claims he cheated may not be remedied. He says he wants to restore his attraction to me, but I'm not sure if this is feasible. He simply misses me and the baby, as well as the companionship we have. He promises to have an open phone policy to begin a new relationship with me based on honesty and trust, and to notify me whenever he feels tempted to cheat. He claims he can deal with it if he comes in every morning to seek a release. This all sounds far too difficult. Of course, I miss him and our ten years together, and I really want to forgive him. I can't see myself living with anybody else, and I don't want to be a single mother. 
Since the beginning of our relationship, I've grown to love him more and more. Anyway, I'm not sure if it's worth it to give him another chance. I believe the two main concerns are getting over the infidelity and the lack of attraction towards me, both of which he wants to work on. But if he can't, I'm afraid he'll cheat again or, at best, stay but be unhappy with me.